Hi! Welcome back to our class, Chemistry 100B Laboratory. Before we are going to introduce to you this apparatus for our second activity, may I introduce to you our laboratory assistants in the person of Miss Maris Aguot. And Miss Gina Perocho. Hi. These ladies will be helping you during the laboratory activities when we will have our face to face classes. Thank you, ladies. Today, we will perform our second activity that is on the common laboratory apparatus. Now, in this activity, we will be learning what are these laboratory apparatus which are commonly used during the experiment. And we will also try to know what are their specific uses and functions. So the common laboratory apparatus are the following. We have first, the test tube. Now, this test tube is used to contain liquids or chemical reagents for a chemical reaction. Then we have the Erlenmeyer flask. If you're going to look at the Erlenmeyer flask, it has a flattened bottom and an elevated a little bit of the neck. Then we have the graduated cylinder. This is used to measure liquids. Then we have the beaker. Okay, this is used to contain liquids and it is also used for measuring large amount of liquids. We have the ordinary funnel. This will aid you during filtration operation. Then we have the watch glass. This is used to contain substances for you to observe, be it a solid or a liquid. Then we have the wire gauze. The wire gauze is used to support vessels or containers when heating. Then this is what we call the iron stand. The iron stand supports the iron clamps. So we have here the iron clamps and we have the burit clamp. Because it supports the clamps, so how does this operate? You do this way and then you have to fasten the clamp tightly onto the iron stand. Next, we have the iron ring, okay? The iron ring supports a container when heating. So this will be also supported by the iron stand. This is the mortar and pestle. Now, the mortar and pestle is used for grinding purposes to convert larger particles into smaller ones or finer ones. This is the evaporating dish. It is used to contain liquids to be evaporated. This is the steering rod. The purpose of the steering rod is of course to steer for mixing purposes. And this is the thermometer. The thermometer is used to determine the temperature of substances. Then we have the test tube rack. Now the test tube rack is where you are going to place the test tubes for safety purposes. So for example, if you have these test tubes, then when you are going to place them safely, put them into the test tube rack. Then we have 
the medicine droppers. Okay? This is used to transfer liquids, a small amount of liquids, from one vessel to the other. Then we have the crucible tongue. The crucible tongue is used to hold the crucible, especially when you are going to hit the crucible. Say, so for example, you hold the crucible this way. Then we have the test tube holder. We are going to hold the test tube. When you're going to heat liquids in a test tube, of course, you're going to hold the test tube with a test tube holder. This is the water trough. The water trough is used to contain water, especially for experiments that needs water displacement method. Then, this is the clay triangle. The clay triangle is used to support the crucible when you are going to hit something inside the crucible. Of course, this is supported by what we call the clay shield. This is the test tube brush. This is used to clean the test tubes. Now, when you are going to use the test tube brush in cleaning the test tube, do not use this when you are cleaning the test tube with an AC. This is only used to clean the test tubes when you are cleaning the test tube with detergent and water, not an AC. Because the bristles here will be melted once this will come in contact with the AC. This is the pipette. The pipette is used to measure accurate and exact amount of liquids. Then we have the volumetric flask. The volumetric flask is used to measure exact amount of liquids. Then we have the cork boiler. From the name itself, cork borer, this is used to bore holes through the cork. Okay. So how does this operate? So when you're going to bore a hole through the cork, the first thing that you're going to do is you are going to soften the cork by pressing it or rolling it on the table, tabletop. Then you wet it with water. Then roll again on the tabletop, and once it is softened, you are going to then you are going to bore the hole through this cork using a cork borer. So you have already bored a hole through the cork. Then this is what we call the burette. The burette also is used to measure exact amount of liquids. Usually this is used for titration purposes. Lawrence flask with a longer neck and a rounded bottom. This is a separatory funnel. The separatory funnel is used to separate two or more invisible liquids. Okay, so how does this operate? If you have already the content inside the separatory funnel, you have only to turn this valve here in such a way that the liquid will flow down this tube. Then you close the valve. This is the fish tail. So the fish tail is used together with the Bunsen burner because this is used to spread the flame of the Bunsen burner. So you place it on top of the barrel of the Bunsen burner. 
This is the crucible and cover. Now, for those chemical reactions wherein you're going to heat the substance inside this crucible and does not need the air, so you're going to use a crucible and cover it. This is a distilling flask. The distilling flask is used to contain the liquid to be distilled. In distillation, there are two processes involved, the evaporation and condensation. So, into this distilling flask, we are going to place the liquid to be evaporated. And this work together with the condenser. So, it is, it works this way or it functions this way and into the condenser this is the condenser and into the condenser the gas that is evaporated from the distilling flask will be condensed back into the liquid this is what we call the water bath now gentle heating requires a water bath when you heat something like when you are going to heat the liquid inside the beaker and you don't want it to be heated directly so you have to place this into the water bath this way. So that is the function of the water bath. When gentle heating is required, you place the substance into a beaker then place it inside a hot water bath. This is what we call an adapter. An adapter works together with the condenser. So this is to be inserted at the tip of the condenser in order to collect the distillate. The distillate is that substance that is the result of distillation. Then we have the capillary tube. These are small tubes in which a substance is allowed to pass through this capillary. This is used during the experiment on the determination of the boiling points of the oil. Okay, let's have the iron stand assembly. Now, in this assembly, this iron stand supports the iron ring. So, we place the iron ring here. It is supported by the iron stand. Then, the iron clamp. This is the iron clamp that is also supported by the iron stand. And this is what we call the flask clamp. This is the flask clamp. So this flask clamp is used to hold the early layer flask when you are going to heat something into the early layer flask. And the wire gauze supports the early layer flask when you are going to heat something inside the early layer flask. So this is what we call the iron stand assembly. This is what we call the triple beam balance. The triple beam balance is used to measure or determine the mass of an object. And this is the clay shield. This is used to support the vessels or containers when you are going to heat something. So when you are going to heat something, you are going to use the basin burner. Okay. Attach this rubber tubing into the gas cup. Then place the clay shield over the basin burner this way. Shielding the flame of the basin burner from being blown off by the wind. This is what you call the pipe door. The
The pipitor is used to aid in pipetting a substance through the pipe. So we use it this way. Pipitor. Then we have the last but not the least, the reagent bottle. The reagent bottle is used to contain the reagents or the chemicals. So these are the common laboratory apparatus that you are going to use during the experiment. So in your lab guide, you are going to draw this and write their functions. Kindly submit your work on Friday, August 28th. This is your teacher, Professor Visitas Ruiz of Holy Name University.